Hello and welcome, hey. everybody. Hey there. Hello from Germany. But to kick it off, Martin put together this wonderful presentation. Martin, I'm going to hand it over to you. Uh, take us into the wonderful world of auto reversing rings. OK, um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. And uh, let's dive into our presentation. Um, OK, shall we go on to the next slide? Yes, sir. OK. That's us. We already introduced ourselves. Here's a short overview of everything we'll cover today in this uh, presentation. We will have a full demonstration of our reversing rings. The, we call the rings retro adapters. Um, we will uh, give you tips on how to use them well with uh, different focal lengths. Um, we will also let you know of what camera adapters and what lenses are compatible. Um, we will configure a whole setup, uh, speaking of a camera and a lens and the adapter. Um, we will have a short video um, taken, taken by Matt yesterday uh, that lets you see right through his camera's viewfinder. And uh, we will also give you some information of how you get, can get even more magnification with uh, some of our macro bellows. And in the end, there is a live Q&A with both of us. Um, and should you have additional questions, please leave them in the comments section or send us an email, and we'll be happy to, happy to answer all of these questions. Fantastic. All right. OK, so um, what is a macro reversing ring? That's a very good question. It's, uh, well, I have one here. It's basically, that's what it is. It's basically two mounts connected by cables. So in other words, it's a communications device um, that lets your camera speak to your lens um, while, it's, while it's flipped around. And we will explore this in the next um, slide a little bit better. As you can see here, um, the retro adapter has two mounts. It's uh, the camera mount and the lens mounts. And it has these uh, gold-plated contacts that lets your camera speak to your lens while it's flipped around. Um, it lets you use autofocus in some cases, if that's something you would like to use. Um, it lets you stop down the lens um, to achieve um, the, the perfect f-stop value for the shot you're, you're trying to, to do. OK, here is um, a, a perfect example um, of a mirrorless camera. It's a Panasonic Lumix S1 with a reverse mounted 24 to 105 millimeter lens. And uh, that's how the whole construction basically, the whole setup basically uh, is going to look. And what we have here is a, is a perfect example of what you can achieve if uh, you reverse mount one of your, if you or if you flip around one of your kit lenses. Um, we used a Fuji 18 to 135 millimeter lens, and we just reverse mounted it and um, set at 50 millimeters focal lengths. We have this amazing. Um, we were able to to capture this amazing image of a dollar coin, and. In the next image, we can see um, the same dollar coin with the same lens flipped around um, at 90 millimeter focal lengths. Isn't that awesome? What do you say, Matt? Wow. I think I, I, I had no idea. I mean, I, I, I knew that these existed before, but uh, just the fact that I can use my, my kit zoom lens and, and flip it around and at different focal lengths have massively different magnifications. It makes sense, but seeing it in action it makes me really excited i know that a uh, reversing ring for your for your favorite camera the nikon c6 is already on its way to you to to new york so i'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing your your images okay here here's the same lens uh still the uh, dollar lens uh not the same lens uh, still the dollar coin uh, but taken with the same very same lens the 18 to 135 millimeter fuji lens um set at 100 millimeter focal lengths and as you can see we can uh all, we almost have the entire coin uh filling the filling the entire frame Here, here's another cool picture. It's uh, taken of a seashell 
with the same lens, still the same lens, the 18 to 135 millimeter. Um, at what focal lengths, Matt, could you flip around our pictures so you can see the focal lengths? It's taken at 70 millimeter focal lengths. Here at 93 and here at 122 millimeters. So uh, what I was, what I I'm trying to say is that you do not necessarily need uh, a dedicated macro lens to achieve awesome macro images because all of these lenses have been taken with a standard kit lens, the 18 to 135. It's, it's uh, actually, it's a very inexpensive Fuji lens. And by just flipping it around, we can create sort of a, a loop effect at amazing image quality. And that's, that's, that's a really good, cool feature. Don't you agree? I completely agree. I think it's uh, it's it's fantastic. Um, you have a little bit more information coming up about the relationship between focal length and magnification, right? Ex exactly. Um, we have uh, several uh, slides coming, and we will explain the the mystery behind this whole thing in more detail. Okay, uh, some people were wondering for which camera systems um, there is auto reversing rings available. So uh, it's basically for all the mirrorless camera systems out there. And uh, we have an auto reversing ring for one a DSLR camera system. That's the Canon EOS system. And all the others, as I pointed out uh, earlier, are mirrorless systems. So we have one for Canon EOS R. We have one for the Fuji X system. Uh, we have one for Nikon Z. And if you happen to have um, the original Nikon F to F to Z adapter, you can also use your um, F mount lenses with the Nikon Z uh, flipped around. Oh, you do have an example. Awesome, I'll, cool. I'll show you guys later. Yeah. Um, we also have an, uh, a reversing ring for the L mount that includes cameras from uh, Panasonic, uh, Leica, and Sigma because uh, all of these three uh, manufacturers share the same mount. They created the L mount alliance, so you can flip around lenses and camera bodies. So that's that's a cool cool thing. Then we have one for um, all the micro for thirds shooters out there, which includes cameras from uh, Olympus and Panasonic. And of course, we do have one for all the Sony E-mount shooters out there. So I think we pretty much covered the entire spectrum of macro capable cameras out there. All right. Do you, do you want to add something, Matt? Please, please no, go I, ahead. No, I was reading some of the some of the questions. I'm sorry. There's Got there's it. a lot of good comments. Is the ruler in centimeters? Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get to that a little a little later. So um, some of you did ask which lenses are compatible. Um, we have this uh, cool graph here uh, on the right side of the slide, and a few examples on the left hand side. But uh, we can we, basically we can say um, the shorter the focal length or the wider um, your lens gets, uh, the higher the magnification uh, will will become. So that's uh, that it's illustrated by the graph on the right hand side, and the few examples on the left illustrate the fact. So if, if you, if for example, you're shooting a micro for search camera and you happen to have the twelve to one hundred millimeter lens, you'll be able to reach magnification factors all the way from 1.7 to almost four times life size. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's that's a very high magnification. So I'm not used to thinking about, I mean, I'm used to focusing close with wide angle lenses, but not macro close. So that's, that's just fascinating. And uh, we had um, a Fuji X mount camera in one of the previous uh, slides uh, used, and we were using it with the 18 to 135 millimeter lens. Another cool uh, Fuji kit lens is the 55 to 200. And if you flip around this lens and uh, it is set to 55 millimeters, you'll be able to reach a magnification as high as 4.5 to one. And that all of that you can achieve with a standard inexpensive kit lens remember Amazing. that so the lens you own can be a macro lens 
Exactly. And uh, if you compare that to a dedicated macro lens, you can achieve higher magnification factors because most standard macro lenses are able to reach magnification factors as high as one to one. And that's it. Mm. Okay, shall, shall we go on? Now, is it, I, well, there's, there's one other one point. Um, is the resolving power of kit lenses uh, better? than in the regular orientation when you reverse it? That's that's actually a, a very good question, Matt. Um, if you if you reverse your standard kit lenses, the resolving power actually gets gets better. You can achieve higher magnification images uh, compared to um, standard standard mounting of your of the kit lens. It's very interesting. And you, you'll be amazed if you just reverse mount uh, one of these kit lenses. Makes me wish I, I became a lens optical designer, right? The, <laughs> math, that, if my math were stronger, maybe I would have. This is fascinating. Okay, so what comes with the retro adapter kit? Um, that's illustrated in this slide. sensitive rear lens element and the stepping ring marked with number three is optional so the reversing ring comes with a 58 millimeter filter thread by default and if your lens the lens you want to want to flip around has a different diameter you need to add um, a stepping ring so he, he Have an exam have eight millimeter filter threads, so there's no extra stepping ring required. Now we're going to do a demo with Martin. Okay, so, so let's assemble uh, a complete uh, reverse adapter kit. I have my Canon EOS R camera here, and I did bring the, of course, the appropriate reversing ring, and. I have a Canon 17 to 85 millimeter lens. It's an original EF mount lens, and we'll make it compatible with the original Canon adapter. It's the mount adapter EF EOS R. So I combine these two first. And this lens does not come with a 58 millimeter filter thread. So I have to attach one of the optional filter stepping rings okay okay so now i have assembled the entire kit and now you can just reverse mount. Oops, oops, that's where the red dot is. Reverse mount the lens, and that's how easy it is to reverse mount your lens. You're still able to adjust the focal length. You're still able to adjust the focus, and of course, you control the f-stop by means of the appropriate dials on your camera. That's amazing. Okay, Matt, um, do you want to just play the video that you pre-recorded yesterday? Yeah. The, view, the views through your camera? Yeah, so what I did was I have a Nikon C6, um, and I mounted my 50 millimeter f1.4 G lens on it, uh, which has a native 58 millimeter thread mount. In fact, I can show you guys. I have that very same setup here. So I have the lens reversed here. And this is one end of the reversing ring. This is the other end of the reversing ring. And on the front of it, we have the Heliopan perfection, protection filter and the handy dandy little lens cap keeper. And the lens cap is included. What a nice touch. Um, and of course, it's all connected with this. So I hooked it up to 
uh, my Ninja V recorder so I could record what's coming through the EVF. And uh, there's no sound to this video, but it's only like 29 seconds long. So don't think something's wrong when I hit play. <laughs> there's just nothing interesting to say. So um, I'm going to say it now. One of the things that I discovered during this was that, and you'll see this during the last clip, as I open up the lens, the bokeh changes dramatically. As I stop down, you'll see almost the perspective sort of breathe in and out. And I found that fascinating. I think I can use that very creatively as I move forward. So without further ado, here's the video. Hey, this is fun, right? <laughs> is, is that a Mamiya lens? Yeah, it's a 35 millimeter, 645 it's lens. That's what I thought. Everyone seems and that's fascinated. It, right? Look at that. Photography. Wasn't that oh, awesome? Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. That's funny. When we're playing the video, normally the sound doesn't come through while we're talking. So you guys got this here behind the curtains a little bit there. <laughs> so back to our slides. Um, demo time. We just did that. And what's it look like through a camera? We just saw that. So how can I get even more magnification? Well, that's that's a very good question. What you can do is you can attach almost on a let's let's put it different. You can attach every one of the Novaflex auto reversing rings to any of the Novaflex universal bellows. So there's different universal bellows out there. We have three different bellows and uh, by adding one of the auto reversing rings to um one of our universal bellows, you can uh, make them become a, a smart bellows with complete communication between your lens and the camera back and forth. And as you can see here in this slide, you can mount the lens flipped around or in you know, just standard configuration. And by adding extension in between your camera and your lens, you can even achieve higher magnification factors. So it's, it's that easy. Do you want to add something, Matt? I, I just say I'm something amazed. you discovered through through our video shoot and cat skills last year. Well, like, I'm amazed over and over again as I uh, descend deeper into the uh, I say the black hole of macro photography. I say that in a fascinating sense in that it's sucking me in. Um, <laughs> the the myriad of opportunity to configure different pieces and parts of an imaging system that are connected by NovaFlex just continues to amaze me. Um, not only can I use my standard lens or a macro lens and I can extend it, I can just like Legos put all these things together in such a precision manner uh, that my confidence and my ability to do creative things with extreme magnification just going up and up and up. So thank That's you for that. That's building blocks uh, for photographers, in other words. <laughs> yes, yes, I love it. Okay, shall, shall we go on? Yes. Which bellows, which bellows are compatible? That's that's a good question. We have, as I mentioned that earlier, we have three different bellows. There is uh, the Belpro One universal bellows. I have it here. It has fixed fixed standards on the front and the rear, and the rear. And if you want to add tilt and shift capability, we have the Velpro TS bellows. So it adds tilt and shift Please. on both standards. Wow. And if, you, if you're looking for a more compact bellows, uh, for bellows that you can carry around, uh, if you're out and about, we have this small little fellow here. It's, we call it the Bell F. And uh, in one of the next slides, we're going to assemble a complete smart bellow setup for you guys so you can see what's possible exciting demo time here, here it we is. are yes so let's do this and get martin in full screen okay i still have my setup here the one that i combined for you guys earlier and now we replace that with the bellows Put this in here. 
I just disassemble everything. And to attach the auto reversing ring to the bellows, I need to adapt the rings, one that uh, makes sure the ring attaches to the front and one that goes to the rear standard, which is screw it in here, screw the other ring in here. down so that's how easy it is to combine all the different Novo flex building blocks to achieve even more even higher magnification with your existing uh, equipment so if you if you already own one of our reversing rings and if and you want to achieve higher magnification just purchase one of our bellows plus the two adapter rings that attach the reversing ring to the bellows and you can uh, go on to work with your existing gear that's that's amazing so not a, okay my confidence just went up again so not only uh, if I buy one piece at a time, not only can I do one thing with it, but like we were talking about the you know adult Legos here, I could I have future potential by using different adapters to add it to other things. Um, exactly, that's what it is. Wow, wow. So uh, Bradley asked, "What is your magnification with this kit?" Was was this particular kit? Uh, let's just. Oh, why don't we just try out what happens and um, I just hold a ruler in front of it. We can do it live. In the meantime, I know Bradley, there's um, there's some pretty extensive documentation uh, in the, the bellows kits. So you can find the, uh, the user manuals often have all of these magnification factors included in them. Uh, so we can, we can look that up on the website. Uh, if not, uh, we can get back to you with that specific information. So thank you. So Martin. Yep. I can't see the back of your camera. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let me let me get back to Matt with the uh, with that specific information yep. later. Okay. We also have um, NovaFlexUS.com is going through a complete rebuild. Um, and we are imminently going to re-release that website uh, with more features and more information. So in the coming months, you will see not only a better website with a better experience, but uh, more answers to questions like this. Hey, there's another interesting question by Terrence that we can answer right away. Will your system work with Sony G Master lenses, both fixed and zooms? Um, Terence, are you are you referring to the the smart bellows or just the auto reversing rings? So, if if you want to just use the auto reversing rings, we would re definitely recommend to use it with zoom lenses only. But if you're into uh, the auto reversing rings and the bellows, um, you can definitely use both um, zooms and primes as well. Have, we've been talking about these with a lot of people, um, and there are some common questions in addition to the ones that we're going to get to your guys next. Um, <clears throat> so we did cover this a little bit earlier. Is the NovaFlex auto reversing ring available for my camera system? We showed the graphic, but here it is in writing and a different way to look at it. Yes, both forms of Canon, the EOS and EOS R system, the DSLR and mirrorless, Fujifilm X mount, not the medium format, Alan, sorry. Um, uh, Martin, do you have uh, any sort of timeline on medium format or is it uh, under consideration at this point? It's not under consideration at this point. 
Um, if anybody wants to add votes to that, put it in the chat room. But um, the uh, the product roadmap is just pretty clear for NovaFlex. So we appreciate knowing what people want. Why would I choose one of your auto reversing rings over one of the many inexpensive manual rings available? Well, the auto reversing ring, as explained earlier, transfers the entire communication between your camera back and forth. So it's not only autofocus, it's um, aperture control. So everything is maintained. It's as if your lens would be sitting right in your camera's bayonet mount. And that's something a manual reversing ring can't do for you. So using a manual reversing ring is fine as long as you work with lenses uh, that can be manually stopped down. And uh, this is not possible with almost all of the current mirrorless system camera lenses because all of these lenses have electromagnetic aperture control and you need to, you have to have a camera to control the aperture in those lenses. Can I use camera built-in focus stacking with auto reversing rings? Uh, yes, of course you can. Uh, that's something we uh, got asked uh, quite uh, quite often, and it's it's definitely possible to use uh, camera built-in focus stacking. Can I use the lens burial to focus a reversed lens? Well. Um, actually, no, and we wouldn't recommend to do so. Uh, you can either rock back and forth handheld um, or and that's something we would definitely recommend to do is to use one of our focusing racks. Um, that's um, a very solid uh, piece of equipment that lets you fine tune focus. And uh, that's, that's very important if you're into focus stacking and all those kinds of things. Can I use my auto reversing ring with one of your bellows systems? Uh, we covered that in some of the previous slides. Um, yes, of course, you can do that. We also assembled a, a complete um, smart bellows kit. Um, I can, maybe you can just, you can just bring this into the picture. Sure. That's, That's um, our ball, ball F bellows combined with the auto reversing rings for Canon EOS R. And of course, um, that's something Brenda did ask uh, in the chat section, the comments section. If you happen to have uh, different camera systems, all you have to do is just buy a second auto reversing ring, the one for your second camera system, and you can just flip around back and forth between Canon, Fuji, Canon, Leica, so whatever you desire. That's that's all also possible. So let's go on. What else do I need? Well, depending on the filter size of your lens, you might need a step down ring uh, to match your lens. The um, auto reversing ring comes with a 58 millimeter filter thread by default. And uh, it's very important. These rings are optional, so they do not come with uh, the reversing ring kit. And yeah. But they are they are inexpensive, so you can relax. Um, what else do we have? All right. So the first thing I noticed was that uh, there were many requests to play that video again. So I'm going to do that again right now, and then we're going to roll into the other questions that we had. Uh, so here's the video again. The video with your Mamiya lens. Yes, I can also take a link. I can post a link to this video in the comments so you guys can watch it as many times as you like. So here it goes. So since you can hear me, what I was doing was manually focusing sometimes and every once in a while seeing if I could get the autofocus to work with a half press of the the shutter and here's me stopping down and opening up to see how the lens is breathing I, I found that fascinating so i will definitely be posting a link to that you can watch it um that's good so brenda said so unless my filter size is 58 millimeters i need a step ring yes yes you do yep okay so all right so i have uh, some other questions in here um, Florencio, Velpro, mm -hmm. tilt shift, true tilt and shift in the future? 
say that again. Uh, that's that's all the information I have. I assume that Florencio is asking if there is a tilt shift version of the bellows. Yes, yes, there is. That, okay. That's the bell. That's the bell Pro TS. It offers okay. uh, a tilt and shift on both standards. Okay. All right. Was it, perhaps they asked that uh, maybe in our slide presentation we didn't indicate that, or I thought we did. Well, we we only came up with the auto codes, which are Bell Pro TS for the tilt shift version and Bell Pro One for the bellows with the fixed standards. Got it. Okay. Uh, Bradley asked, "Could a medium format bellows be adapted?" Uh, and it just jumped. Where to go? Where to go? Oh, there we go. Could a medium format bellows be adapted to smaller format cameras? Um. Well, actually, uh, these these bellows here are all universal bellows, so they are not medium format bellows by default. So, um, if you purchase one of these bellows, that's how how you you purchase it. It doesn't come with specific mounts. So, if you want to, let's say, combine a, a medium format lens with uh, one of your Fuji or Leica or whatever cameras, you just have to buy the appropriate adapters. Um, for the camera and the lens side. So that's basically the the mystery behind the universal bellows. Okay, great. Uh, Brent is affirming that he really liked this for Nikon F-mount DSLR. Um, um, we're working on that. Got it. And we do have many votes for medium format bellows here. Um, and Bradley, thanks. You said you're fascinated with the Bellow system. We would like to add the reverse system. Excellent. I think the webinar did its job. Um, this is a great place to ask us questions. Um, so is info at novaflexus.com. It'll come right okay. to us. OK, here's, here, here's a follow up by Florencio. Yes, but it only tilts in the y direction. I think that's, uh, I think he's talking about the Beltra TS again. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have it tilt in the y uh, or in the x direction, uh, you just add an L bracket, flip it around, and then you can also use it in product photography. Yes, yes. You just demonstrate you can rotate your camera. Exactly. You can, well, you, you, you yeah. can rotate the camera or you can rotate the entire bellows by adding yeah. an L bracket underneath. Exactly. That's, yeah. That's how it works. Yep. All right. What other questions do we have? Uh, where is the cast ball tilt shift? Was, I pronounce, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Haro Tanelia. Yeah, Haro. The cast ball. Uh, the Caspol TS. Yes. Um, we we actually discontinued the Caspol TS system. There's uh, we have limited uh, stock that's still available, but uh, officially it's discontinued. Uh, will your system work with Sony G Master lenses, both fixed and zooms? I think we all already answered that previously. Okay. But right. yes, yes, it does. Uh, uh, Sony both, just both. Sony E mount, right? Yeah. Yes, that's Sony Eman. So both the smart bellows, the universal bellows, and the auto reversing rings are available for Sony Eman lenses and cameras. Okay. Bradley noted, uh, I have a Novaflex 105 millimeter f4 bellows lens. Mm -hmm. Will this perform better than the bellows and this lens? Well, reversing your lenses will uh, get you to higher magnification factors. That's for sure, because the old 105 millimeter Novaflex bellows lens head uh, was not capable uh, of reaching one to one, even one to one. Right. So. Uh, Maurice asked, and I forget what this is in reference to. Perhaps we passed by it. Is the ruler in centimeters? I guess that's the graduated markings. This one here, yes, it's yes. In, it's in centimeters. Okay. Great. And Good also question. the ruler on our bellows, yes. Okay. Fantastic. I don't think there's any other older questions that I missed. If I did, we will find it. Um, how, how about a bellows webinar? Bradley asked this. Oh, it's on the it's on the map for sure. Yep. We'll definitely uh, do a webinar on bellows, and you will you will get an email in the not so distant future. Yep. All right, so, um, all right, so just uh, one more reiteration. Um, if you guys are so enthusiastic 
about what we've been talking about. Um, I did post the link to that Jot form, which allows you to uh, let us know if you are interested in helping you find the right product. Um, I'm going to post it one more time here. So, um, and we know, we understand. Um, we understand that uh, uh, it might be a little hard to find it in your area. No big deal. Uh, Brenda and I can help you connect with the right place to obtain it. Uh, and answer, answer any other uh, questions that you have. And also, yes, Brenda notes, please be sure to um, put your name in the form so we know how to address you. Um, great. Thank you, Charles. And thank you all. Martin, thank you for a wonderful presentation. It was very thorough and full of joy. My pleasure. I feel closer to the subject, pun intended. It, it, uh, was, it was lots of fun, definitely. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Uh, thank you all for attending. We appreciate you. And uh, we will see you on the interwebs or in person. Have a great thank day. You. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.